Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys, I want to go ahead and talk about the whole Black China versus her ex-personal assistant, Jamal Terrence, okay? It went down, but first and foremost, I want to go ahead and shout out Kuban because he's one of the ones who emailed me, honey. He bought all types of receipts in tea, so I definitely appreciate it. Um, so anyways, what's going down is this, as we all know, Black China is still trying to get folks to watch that struggle-ass show that is the Black China show on Zeus, Okay. So they had showed a premiere episode because, um, you know, episodes are still premiering, even though this show came out in the summer. Um, they showed a new episode. And basically in that episode, you have Black China. Um, she caught the police on Jamal Terrence. She wants him to leave the house. She's going off on him. And she's also firing him. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys a clip really quick. Y'all go ahead and check this out. No, you just go. Tell, your, tell his people to move the cameras. Hold on man. a sec. And not only have you called the police and you called TMZ, you want to take it a little bit further and then now go on live, like at my house. Hold on, he's on live, so. Hold on, wait, he's on live right now. He's not about to record my house. Okay, here, here, the police, here, you guys go He can't here. record my house on live. You're recording me in your house, it's so my I can go see the exact right same here. thing. Okay, 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 okay. Jamal, you're out of control. Like, he looked crazy. No, you guys are out of control. Oh, yeah. You're really out of control. Right. And I never signed the NDA, by the way. That's fine. Let's go. The real Black China. Like, fuck. Like, come on, get out, go home. You're 24. You're young. You still have life to go. Fuck the industry. Fuck the industry. Fuck Hollywood. Go home. Go to Atlanta, make a new life. A regular nine to five job is fine. Make a buy and I paid it off and it's my money. I'm a boss ass nigga. Nigga, I make over 100000 a year. Well, everybody knows me. Nigga, I was drink ass nigga. I'm fine. Nigga, that was good. What's good? Baby, Alex don't play. <laughs> He'll be jazz, no. <laughs> the Real Black China, available now, only on Zeus. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So once that went viral on Instagram, Jamal was definitely pissed off and in his feelings. So he took to social media and he tweeted, the show should be called Surviving Black China. So then, you know, a lot of Black China's fans started going back and forth with him. And then he decided to be extra messy. So at this point, he not only accused Black China of just being crazy as shit, which we all know, but he basically confirmed that she's a drug user and that he's also saying that China's son is afraid of her and that he has to sleep in the same room with him because, you know, her attitude is so crazy and she just scares him. So he fired off a bunch of messages on IG. And on top of that, he also released a bunch of their private text messages as well so the whole situation was just insane i'm only going to read to you guys what he posted on ig i'm not going to go ahead and read this book of texas and all this other shit i will put in the video y'all can pause the video and y'all can read it yourselves this is just some of what he posted so jamal goes on to say where's the team you hired after i left you then he says they all quit because you're crazy as fuck let's see this rolling out magazine cover you walked out or were you mad because I didn't want to smash every time you tried to? Once again, alluding that Black China sexually harasses him and asks him for peeing when she's in the mood, even though he's gay. But that's a whole nother video. Honestly, it doesn't bother me. But when my niece is bullied at school because at Black China, you lied on your show to play victim, you're complete trash and I can't wait for karma to come. Oh, and how would King even go to sleep unless I stayed in his room because he's scared of you? And this lame-ass nigga, Lemire Plummer, Driving around LA with expired tags on that old ass Maserati. You bring China alcohol on days she films to get her out of character. Then he goes on to say, I told you many times she can't drink and you continue to bring it. There is about two scenes in the entire season where she is sober. Then at that point is when he goes on to show the different text messages between him and Ashton and other people. So y'all can go ahead and check this out.
All right, so you guys just saw those messages. Now, on top of that, he also went live to address the situation further. So y'all go ahead and check out this live stream really quick. And, um... Uh, I really had nobody to even vent to about the situation because everybody was like, um, they're like, don't do it, it's so wrong. But it's like when, um, like, you have to deal with stuff. And you guys, sometimes you guys don't understand, like, my uh, niece went to school and, like, somebody was trying her. Like, oh, you're, like, you're, because she posts, like, everything that I post, like, what I've been doing. She's like, your, your uncle is, like, like, kind of, like, talk to, like, they just, like, tried to start some shit. So, only thing, only thing you could do is honestly just tell the truth and not, like, try and hurt somebody's life to live in a lie. So, it's pretty much why I had to speak. And also, like, when somebody, like, try and paint a picture of you, a lot of people know that that's not me. Like they know I'm not the, I'm not the I'm not the type of person that do negative. I don't. It's not even my character, bro. Like I probably do like some petty shit and rant, but like to to like I see if it was like some love and hip hop shit where like you caught in the scene and some shit just happened, but like y'all literally went back to the table and wrote out what y'all were gonna do. Like, you guys have said things to me outside of the cameras and to people. Like, oh, we're going to make sure you pay. Oh, at the end of the day, I can put it on my show. Like, that's the type of shit that's not cool. And that's the route that they took. And they still, to this day, talk about me. And they still, to this day, hop on my live from hat Instagram accounts. They still, to this day, continue to talk. <laughs> and um, the guy, Alex, he saw me like three times this weekend. And he called China while he was standing in the club looking at me, gossiping that he was near me. So I don't know what she assumed this guy can fight for or whatever her intentions was. Like, it's okay. And the clients that I work for, they don't even know who she is, nor watch this show. I responded to for the people that is a part of this whole little thing she got going on, so. But I honestly, I texted her before the episode even came out, and I was like, hey, I actually think we should talk, and I think you should address this before this go, like, nationwide. So, like, I really think we should talk. She said she wanted to talk, but we, she never made it happen because somebody else went back and lied to her and said that I said some more shit about her, which is crazy. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, she's probably just so accustomed to losing people that if somebody else go away, then it's just like, fuck it, then they're the problem. It's like, no, it's happening too many times for you to keep blaming somebody else. So, um, but... I am, um, I'm working on some things that are actually going to be, like, super excited. Um, huh. and I really, uh, <laughs> I don't, honestly, I think I stood around for this so long because me and, uh, like, King had, like, a really close relationship. We had, like, a really, really, really close relationship. Like, he actually was, like, calling me, like, his best friend and shit, so. Uh, it was, like, the best. It actually was probably, like, one of the um, weirdest experience I've ever experienced in my life. Um, I definitely had an amazing life before, uh, before, like, doing this. It was never something that, like, it was, like, hey, can you work for me? It was, like, no, I saw somebody who needed help, and I decided to help. And I just, I see came to do, I, we were planning to, so me and China had kind of been knowing each other for like two or three years before this shit. Ashton is cool, but, um, yeah. But, the best thing in life is to look at the situation, see what you've learned, and... Yeah, and that's it pretty much.
And I love Tokyo. Tokyo is, she's nice. There's like some weird shit that happened between us, but it was some more he say, she, she say shit. Um, but yeah. But I have some amazing stuff that I'm gonna um, be sharing with you guys soon. You know, people are like, um, like, what's next? I actually have uh, <laughs> a lot of stuff. I know y'all like the show. One thing I can say, it is good drama. I mean, even when I talk about it, it will have people going to watch it. So, at the end of the day, I'm really not hurting her. I'm still getting her paid. So, <laughs> I, if you honestly look at it like that, I'm going to give you, like, the free marketing. So, yeah. Yeah, I, technically. But. So, um, no, what y'all be having, y'all be crazy. What do y'all live? <laughs> I am in, um, LA right now. Money. Let me tell y'all this. One thing I learned about um, working in entertainment, I'm really one of those people who um, I take what I do serious, very serious, and it can come off. A All right, so you guys just saw that live and what he had to say about Black China. So like I said, at this point in time, I don't feel bad for any of these people because it's what they signed up for, trying to chase fame and reality television. You know, Black China has a nasty attitude and she has definitely screwed over her staff. All these people that she had around her have now left. But of course, she's going to play victim because she never thinks that she's wrong in anything. Even when she's having a conversation with her mother, the first thing she's doing is allowing her mother to blame everybody else as opposed to holding the mirror in front of Black China's face. You just look right in here, uh -huh. look in there, and you see that you're doing too much. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Well, I was calling your phone because... I kind of like stopped talking and dealing kind of like with the whole team. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel bad. I am a little sad, but I'm fine though. Like, I knew it. I told you so. Glad they gone. Goodbye. Skedaddle. I've been told her about treasure and all the rest of her people that she had around her that they were no good money hungry, grubbing, never pushed her career to go any further than lashed in the back of her basement or in, in her house. The real black China. All right, so you guys just saw what her and Teriyaki Tina had to say. So on top of them, you know, talking about this situation, I will say this. Even though I feel like this whole reality TV show has just made Black China look worse, um, I don't think it's made her look favorable at all. And she's the problem when everyone quits, when everybody, you know, distance themselves away from you, your entire team, even your best friend of many years. At some point in time, you have to look in the mirror because you are the common denominator in this situation, okay? When nobody fucks with you, bitch, you're the issue, okay? I don't feel like it was right for Jamal to release personal information, personal text messages, and stuff between him and Ashton that wasn't the world's business. And also, you know, it's one thing if you have an issue with her and you want to call out her drug use, but leave the babies out of it. Leave the babies out of it. He shouldn't have mentioned King's name. He shouldn't have said nothing about her kids. Kids are off limits, period, point blank. If you don't want, you know, if you don't like the fact that your niece is upset and she's getting picked on at school, then why would you say something about somebody else's child? Do you not think that King may not get picked on, being that you're saying that his mother's a drug addict and she ain't shit? So, again, if you don't like your niece going through the bullying and harassment, why would you put that out there about King? He's also in school. You know, so what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Leave babies out of the fuck shit. If y'all want to argue, bicker, go back and forth on social media and blast each other, y'all are grown. I'm ready to get the fuck ASAP after this shit. But leave the kids out of it. Now, one thing I will say is this when it comes to all these people in Black China's life. I will say that I've always been a believer that, you know, as you're growing and you're climbing the ladder and you're making moves, people will either use you, you know, use that ladder to help push you up further or they'll use it to pull you down. 
you know, and while that's not always the case, it does happen. And when you have a lot of people around you who don't, they really don't want to help you, they're just there for their own end goal. And when you're talking about, you know, celebrity and stardom and fame and money, a lot of people, you know, will act like they have your back. They'll act like they have your best interest at heart. But in the long run, they're just trying to make a name for themselves. And I think that's Black China's issue is that she has a lot of people around her. They don't know how to play their positions. They want to be Black China too, okay? And that's the problem is you can't run with a clique of people who don't know how to just be the personal assistant, who don't know just how to be the best friend, who don't know just how to be, you know what I'm saying, whatever position you hired them for. When you got folks who also want to be celebrities, Celebrities too, and they also want to be famous, it's a recipe for disaster. And that's the same thing that's going to happen with her mother. See, her mother talked all this shit about the show, blasted the show, talked all this shit about her daughter. But now that she has nobody else in her corner, she's invited Teriyaki Tina back to the show. And Teriyaki Tina is living it up, having a good time, clowning, and all that other shit. So much so that Zeus has now offered Teriyaki Tina her own spinoff. So what I find very funny is that she talked all this shit about her daughter being on television, how her daughter was being exploited, how nobody was getting paid because nobody got paid for this shit, okay? She talked all this mess, but now she's willing to sign on for her own show. So do you see how fame and, you know, a little bit of attention will warp people? People will go in with the so-called best intentions. I just want to be a mother to my daughter. I just want to see my grandkids. But now that she has her own shot at fame, now fuck all this shit I said a month ago, I'm about to get my own show. So that's the problem. Black China has a lot of disingenuous people around her, including her mother. Her mother is very disingenuous. Because if you can call your child, if you can tell your child that you wish you would have aborted them, and that they're a rape baby, and then turn around and say that you didn't mean it that way, you have a lot of issues. So I don't have no respect for her mom because of how she talks to her child. Regardless of what issues they have, the way she talks to Black China is not cool with me. Those are not words of a mother. When you're saying that you don't care if your mom allowed you to get raped by 20 men, that's still your mother? Fuck out of here. So, again, she has a lot of people around her. They're not there because they genuinely care about her, her well-being, her mental health. They're there to use her because they too are chasing fame. And that is including her mother. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all this plays out. But like I said, I don't feel bad for any of these people because, again, like I always tell y'all, when you sell your soul, you have no right to cry when the devil comes to collect. So we'll see how far these shows get. We'll see if they do anything for her, which I doubt. She's literally lost everything during this show. And she really hasn't really gained anything from it. You know, so the whole situation is crazy. But I think Jamal was definitely bogus to bring up King's name and to show private text messages. You know, but Black China is bogus with the way she treats people and talks to people. And people are only going to handle so much. You know what I mean? And when you keep talking to folks crazy, eventually nobody's going to fuck with you. Period. Point blank. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Concerning Jamal Terrence, Black China's ex-assistant basically going off and blasting her all over social media, telling all her business. How do you guys feel about this? Do you feel like he had the right to do that? Do you feel like he took it too far? And then how do you guys feel about the whole situation with Tokyo Tony not getting a spinoff after all this shit she talked? Now she's about to be on Zeus. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces.